In this video, we are going to look at finding the line that is the intersection of two planes. So we're going to find the equation of this line in 3D. And I want to motivate how we're going to do that by looking at this picture here. So we have two planes. We have a green plane and a, and a blue plane, a light blue plane. And in this picture, we have a point 310. So this point lies on both planes. If you remember your study of planes, we need two things to determine a plane. We need a point on that plane, and we need a vector orthogonal to that plane, or a normal vector, or a vector perpendicular to that plane. All right, so in this picture, it's a little bit hard to see. Can green and blue, green and blue are very similar colors, uh, hard to distinguish, so I'm going to highlight this for you guys. So on the green plane, in this picture, this vector right here, is the vector that's orthogonal to the green plane. That's n sub r. So it's sub r, it's the normal vector for r. This is the plane r, this green plane. And then over here we have the vector that is perpendicular to the plane q. So this is the vector n q, the vector normal to q. So the, the green vector is perpendicular to the green plane and the the blue vector is perpendicular to the blue plane and then these little perpendiculars here. Okay, so what we want to find is the equation of this line. Now if you remember, in order to find the equation of a line, we need two things. We need a point on the line, great, and we need a vector parallel to that line. We need a vector parallel to that line. And so once we have those two things, it's very easy to write the equation if the point on our line is x0, y0, z0, and we have a vector parallel to our line, um, let's just call it v, and let's say that's vector abc, then the equation of the line in vector form is x, y, z equals the point x0, excuse me, the vector x0, y0, z0 from the point that we know plus the parameter t times your direction vector. Okay, so once we know those two things, we're good to go. And you could also write it in parametric form in three different equations. x equals x0 plus t times a y equals y0 plus t times b, and z equals z sub 0 plus t times c. This is just another way to describe the equation of the line. But either way, we need to know two things. We need to know a point on the line, and we need to know a vector parallel to that line. All right, so let's take a look at this picture and see how we could possibly find out this information. Well, hopefully you're seeing already, if we know a point that's on both planes, that point is going to be on the line, on the intersecting line. Okay, so we need to know that. But how do we get a vector that's going the same direction as our line? Well, if you're looking closely at this picture here, you'll see there's another vector right here. That's a little fat. Let's make that skinnier pen. That says the vector n sub q cross the vector n sub r, this vector right here. This vector is the cross product of these two vectors. So let's think about what that means, okay? Let's write this down. So if this vector is the cross product, then the vector that's the cross product of these two vectors is going to be perpendicular to the vector n sub r. This vector is also going to be perpendicular to the vector n sub q. Now since this line L lies in the green plane and the blue plane, then we know that the line L is also perpendicular to the normal vector for r and it's perpendicular to the normal vector for q. So we have this vector that's perpendicular to n r and we have another line that's perpendicular to nr. So if you have basically two, this is a vector and this is a line, but you know we could think of them as line segments. If you've got two lines or line segments that are perpendicular to the same line segment, then they must be parallel to each other. 
right? If two things are perpendicular to the same thing, then they're parallel to each other. Let me draw that in two dimensions so you can kind of think about it. Like if you have some line like this, and I'm going to draw two different lines that are perpendicular to this. So here's a line perpendicular. Now I'm going to draw another line perpendicular to this wherever I want. Okay, like that. So if I've got two different lines perpendicular to the same line, then these lines have to be parallel to each other. And again, we're dealing with vectors, which are like pieces of line segments, but you know, by definition, they would be parallel to each other. They're going in the same direction. When we're talking about vectors and we're talking about parallel, we're not saying they don't intersect necessarily, even though they won't. But what we're really saying is they go the same direction when we're talking about being parallel. Okay, so that's how we're going to find our parallel vector. So therefore, thus, the vector created by looking at the cross product of your normal vectors is going to be parallel to your line L. And that's what we need. We need a parallel vector, right? We need a parallel vector V. And that's how we're going to find it. So this vector for V, we're going to find that by doing the cross product, almost out of space here, the cross product of the normal vectors for the planes. Okay, let's go where we have a little more space. Let's look at this example. We want to find the equation of the line of intersection of these two planes. So again, what do we need to find the equation of a line? Well, we need a point on this line. So in other words, we need a point that makes both of these equations true. We need a point that lies on this plane and a point that lies on this plane. Therefore, will lie in their intersection. And we need a vector that's parallel to our line. And so that vector is going to be the cross product of the normal vectors. We'll call it normal vector 1 cross normal vector 2. So let's say this is plane 1 and this is plane 2. This guy's plane 2. All right, so what's the normal vector for this plane? Well, it's right here, right? This gives you the direction. The coefficients right here give you the direction. So n1 is the vector for negative 2, 1. All right, and n2 is going to be these coefficients. This constant over here doesn't affect the direction of the plane. So that's going to give me negative 1, 3, 4. All right, normal vector 2. Now, how do we find a vector that's parallel to our plane? So these two vectors here are this green vector and this blue vector from our diagram. So to get the vector that's parallel to our line, we need to find the cross product of those two vectors. And that vector will give us the direction of our line. Now, just as a little review, cross product is not commutative. We will get a, a different a vector going a different direction if we cross these um, like that. It would, the, the vector would go the opposite direction, but it would still be parallel to our line. All right, so in with vectors, they're parallel if they're going the same direction or any scalar multiple of that, including negatives. All right, so if I had this vector going this direction and this vector going this direction that's longer but going on 180 degrees the opposite direction, they're considered parallel because this vector would be a scalar multiple of this vector and vice versa. So it doesn't matter which order you cross these is what I'm trying to tell you. And um, you might get a different answer than your neighbor. So if you guys are comparing answers and um, you say, hey, wait a minute, I didn't get that, you know, take a look. Maybe you just did your cross product the opposite, the, the other way. So the way I like to write out my cross product is to do the vectors i, j, k, and then make this little 3 by 3 determinant. If you have a different method of using the cross product, great. Go ahead and do that, and we'll see if we come up with the same answer. So just to review this, I like to um, cross these out, the i column and row, and then the 2 by 2 determinant that's left. We write that down. We're going to figure that out and multiply that by the vector i. And then we're going to subtract. You have to remember to subtract there. We're going to take out these pink things. Then we're going to cross out the row and column for j. 
and write that 2 by 2 determinant. So we've got 4, negative 1, 1, 4 associated with j plus, and then we're going to do the 2 by 2 determinant for k. Cross these out. Okay, so we've got 4, negative 1, negative 2, 3. Okay, so now for the determinant, we go negative 2 times 4 minus 3 times 1 minus 4 times 4 minus negative 1 times 1 4 times 3 minus negative 1 times negative 2 so we end up with the vector negative 11i minus 17j plus 10k or in component form negative 11 negative 17, 10. Awesome. So that is the direction vector for our line. What else do we need? Let's see. We got our direction vector. Check. We need a point. We need a point that lies on both of these planes. Let's go into a clean piece of paper for that. All right. So I wrote down our our vector here, our direction vector for our line that we just found. Now we need to find a point. So in order to do this, we need to find any point on the intersection of these two planes. Um, let's take a look at what these two planes look like. All right, so here's the equation of our two planes. And they're intersecting in a line. And we're finding the equation of this line. Uh, we need to find a point on here. So you'll see, you know, this plane is taking on, this line is taking on all values of x, all values of y, and all values of z. It's not like a vertical line or a horizontal line. It's not uh, perpendicular to any of the xy plane or zy plane or any of that. So literally, we could find like the intercept uh, of where it touches the xy plane or the intercept of where it touches the yz plane. Or, you know, you can just, let's say z is 0. Let me put the uh, plane back in. This is the xy plane that we're used to. So maybe I want to find this point where it's touching the xy axis right there. So I just let z equal zero and figure out what that is. That'll give us a point on the line. You know, we could let any of the variables equal zero and find there's infinitely many points on that line, right? We just need one of them. So there's lots of different possibilities here and I'm showing you one of those possibilities by letting z equal zero. You could let z equal one if you wanted to. You could let x equal ten as long as it's not a vertical plane, you're going to get an answer. And if you get a no solution, then try something else. So if I let z equals 0, then I get 4x minus 2y equals 8 by plugging 0 in here. If I plug 0 in here, I get negative x plus 3y, plug 0 in here, equals negative 2. Well, I got two equations with two unknowns. I think we know how to solve that. All right, we'll keep this the same. You could use substitution or elimination. I'm going to go ahead and multiply this by negative 4, or excuse me, positive 4, because that will give me a negative 4x right there. So we get negative 4x minus 12y equals negative 8. We'll add this up. X's go away. Negative 14y equals 0. Divide by negative 14y equals 0. All right, awesome. That's not always going to happen, but whatever. So now I can take my 0, plug it back in. I'm sure you guys know how to do this. Plug it into any of these two equations. So 4x minus, I'll just plug it into the top one, 2 times 0. So I get 4x equals 8, x equals 2. There we go. So I have the point 2, 0, 0. Let's go see if that point is indeed on our line of intersection. So we got the point 2, 0, 0. There we go, right there. Let me get rid of this uh, plane so we could see it. Oops, did I just move that around? I did. That was weird. OK, I put it back. There it is. See, we can see that's on the line. Cool. And actually, if we turn the plane back on, since we let z equal 0, we can see that's the point that lies in the xy plane, where z is 0, at intersecting at 2, 0, 0 x is 2, y is 0. Okay, so now we got to write the equation of our line. We're almost done. I think we've done all the hard work. We've got our point, 
we've got our direction vector. So back to this, we can write our linear equation as a vector valued function like that, or we could write it as par parametric equations like that. Doesn't really matter. We could write it both ways just for fun. Okay, so x, y, z equals our point, which is 2, 0, 0. Oops, let me do it on this screen where we have our information. The line x, y, z equals the point 2, 0, 0 plus t times negative 11, negative 17, 10. Or in parametric form, x equals 2 minus 11 t, y equals, uh, looks like 0 plus negative 17 t, and z equals 10 t. And if you want to write it one more way, you could simplify this as, or you could write you know these things as your components of your vectors, like 2 minus 11 t, negative 17 t, and 10 t. All right, let's go look at the payoff and check out the graph. I went over there and put in the equation. It can be a little tricky here putting in these equations. I should probably show you. So to put in the line, when you start typing the line, you're going to come up with some options. I have not had luck with this option, point direction vector. It just doesn't seem to work like it's supposed to. So I just do point and a point. So I put in the point 200, zero, zero, which we found, and you have to put the parentheses there. This is I'll just do it because it can be a problem. 200. Zero, zero. Now to get to the other point, if you hit tab, it messes it all up. You have to hit the right arrow key a couple times and it goes over and highlights that other point. If I try to move to that other point in any other way, it messes it all up. Maybe some of you guys know a better way. Now I gotta find another point. So I just take my equation of my line and say I just let t equal 1. I could find all kinds of equations of my line. So if I let t equal 1, I get negative 9, negative 17, positive 10. Actually, that would be a point. So that's a point on my line. And then I can go over here. You can let t equal whatever you want. So I put in the second point. Then I typed in this point and hit enter, and I got the equation that I wanted. So that's how you do it. Okay, I'll just finish it for so if I did negative 11, negative 17, and 10, and, uh, and then hit enter, and I already have it up there, but that's how you got to do it. And then it gives you the parametric form down here, which isn't quite right. I don't know. It's a little weird what's happening. So I put our direction vector in here so we could see it. Oh, I must have typed something wrong. Let's just get rid of this. What did I type wrong? Let's just get rid of it. Okay, I just wanted to show you how to do that mainly for keystrokes and how to manipulate the um, function that pops up for you. So I put our direction vector in here. That's our direction vector we found in standard position right here. See it? So we can see our line is parallel to that direction vector. And it is the intersection of those two planes. So we did it. All right, I hope that helps. This particular problem gives you a lot of review of concepts that you've probably been working on.